Hi, I'm Dr. Chen Sung, and I would like to thank you for watching my second video on thyroid metabolism. Just to recap, the hypothalamus in your brain releases a hormone called TRH. It goes to the pituitary gland, which is also in your brain, and your pituitary releases thyroid stimulating hormone. Thyroid stimulating hormone goes to the thyroid gland right here at the base of the neck, and the thyroid gland releases inactive T4 and active T3. Since the majority of the thyroid hormone released by your gland is the inactive T4, T4 needs to be converted to T3, which is the active form. Now this part is, this part is very important. Appro approximately 60% of T4 to T3 conversion occurs in the liver. 20% occurs in the gut, and another 20% converts in the peripheral tissues of the body. So if we have poor liver function because you're an alcoholic, you drink too much, you abuse your body, or if you have poor gut function, your thyroid hormones will not have the impact we desire. In this video, I will present the information of one of my live in-office seminars. Before I get started, I would like to give you a little bit of a background on myself. My name is Dr. Jin Sung, and I'm a chiropractic physician by training. I've been in practice since 1997, and in the first half of my career, my primary focus was traditional chiropractic care. We treated patients with lower back pain, neck pain, headaches, and other musculoskeletal conditions. What I noticed was that a certain percentage of patients would not get better no matter what we did for them. Or they would get a little bit better, and then they would relapse into that chronic pain cycle. It was at this time I decided to really look at the underlying conditions that these patients had, which really prevented them from their full recovery. This search led me to the practice of functional medicine and spent hundreds of hours of postgraduate study to understand the root causes of what ails these patients. In the current medical model, physicians look at patients in terms of one system and their symptoms, rather than look at the patient as a whole. Let me give you an example. In your case, you exhibited symptoms of hypothyroid, such as fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, depression, cold hands and feet. Your primary care physician sent you to a specialist, an endocrinologist, who ran some routine tests, including thyroid stimulating hormone. TSH. Now TSH is what they use to monitor patients who are on medication. And the TSH may show that you are hypothyroid. You are immediately given a prescription for Synthroid, Lovoxyl, Levothyroxine, and that is your medical management of your thyroid condition. But what if your thyroid symptoms were due to another underlying condition or underlying cause? Did you know that the number one cause for hypothyroid in the United States is Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is an autoimmune condition? Let me say this again. Hashimoto's thyroiditis, number one cause, an autoimmune condition. Basically, your thyroid is being attacked by your own immune system. It recognizes your thyroid as a foreign body. Your immune system is affecting the thyroid gland. It's really not a thyroid problem. Your immune system is attacking it. Did your physician check to see if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis by running the enzymes, TPO and TGB antibodies? Did they check those things? Probably not. I find that more than 50% of the patients that walked through my doors had never checked TPO and TGB antibodies. So they don't know if they have Hashimoto's disease. In the next few minutes, I'm going to reveal to you how millions of men and women just like you with thyroid problems are being misdiagnosed and mismanaged. I know that's a pretty bold statement, but let's face it. You're watching this video today for one of three reasons. One, you think you have a thyroid problem. You have all the signs and symptoms, but your labs are essentially normal. Your doctor kind of shrugs his shoulders 
and says, there's nothing wrong with you, not physically anyway. Two, you've been diagnosed with hypothyroid or low thyroid function. And they gave you armor, synthroid, levothyroxine, one of those medications. But you still have thyroid symptoms. Even worse, you've been told that your lab, labs are normal, right? You're on medication, your labs are normal. Yet you still have all these symptoms. Patients come to me on a regular basis and they say, my labs look normal, but why do I feel so crappy? The number three reason people come is that you're watching this video is because you already have been diagnosed with the Hashimoto's, right? You have an autoimmune thyroid. We know that. You know that. You've been treated. You are being treated for that. But your current treatment isn't working. You still feel crappy. You feel bad. And you have been told that your numbers look normal, but you don't feel normal. What's going to shock you and probably make you mad is this. Your thyroid can malfunction in over 30 different ways. And only one, one of those ways will respond to taking a thyroid replacement hormone. And the icing on the cake is this. Over 70 to 90% of people diagnosed with low thyroid function actually have an autoimmune condition. They have Hashimoto's thyroiditis. They have an autoimmune process, yet they're giving, they're giving them medication, medications to modulate them. This is so common. I'm definitely going to spend more time on Hashimoto's thyroiditis later on. That means essentially 80% of you watching this DVD or video are not going to get better, even on medication. You'll be medicated, but you still won't feel better because you have an autoimmune condition that creates problems. Your TSH will go up one month, go down one month, and they're constantly modulating your medications. Even if you're diagnosed and you're still being treated with the traditional medical model, you still may have all the signs and symptoms of someone who's got thyroid problems. You still sluggish, can't lose weight with exercise, feel cold in the hands and feet and all over the body, require excess amount of sleep to properly function, increase weight even on a low calorie diet, 600 calories a day and you're still gaining weight. Difficulty in infrequent bowel movements is a very big problem in women. Most women that come to the office who have thyroid conditions have one bowel movement a week. Just imagine, and they think it's normal. They can also have thinning of the eyebrows, thinning of the hair, face, or even in the gen general regions. Dry skin or scalp, mental sluggishness, nervousness, emotional problems, insomnia, night sweats, and for all those symptoms, you're being sent to one specialist after another, after another. And then you're given one medication after another medication after another medication. What we do in this office is very different from what you've ex experienced. Basically, your endocrinologist, internal medicine, and GP, or general practitioner, have been treating you with 1960s, medica um, 1960s uh, treatment methods. They give you a medication to modulate TSH. Synthroid was discovered in the 1960s, and they're still prescribing it, and it's the only treatment for what you have. You have to remember, thyroid problems are hugely misdiagnosed. The second reason I say that is that diagnosis is just a label. It's very generic. As you'll see in, in just a second, a traditional diagnosis of hypothyroid or low thyroid just isn't good enough. You have to ask yourself, why is my thyroid acting this way? It's just like you, you came to me and you said, I've been diagnosed with a migraine. Help me. Okay, great. There must be over 50 reasons why you can have a migraine. Being diagnosed with a migraine helps me but it really doesn't help me in terms of how to direct your treatment. I can't turn to a textbook and say, you know, I can just do this, this, and this, and this. Mr. Jones, you will be, you'll be feeling better. It doesn't happen that way. You have to figure out what the triggers are and what the underlying causes are. 
Just like I can't go to a thyroid chapter in a textbook and say, flip to it and say, if you do these three things, you'll be better, no problems. It sounds ridiculous, but that's how you've been treated up to now, isn't it? In my office, what we do is we look at a functional diagnosis. How is your thyroid functioning? What are all the different factors that can affect your thyroid? So I can say that you have a thyroid resistance problem, underconversion problem, or your thyroid hormone is, is off because you have an autoimmune attack. Now that helps me to help manage your, your condition. Not just low thyroid, trying to figure out what the exact mechanism under the low, thi low thyroid diagnosis. That's what helps us. If I find that you have thyroid resistance under conversion or even autoimmune attack, there are natural things we can do to help you, really help you. Because of, because of my training and spending hundreds of hours in functional endocrinology, immunology, functional uh, blood chemistry, is this intense study of physiology, neurology, and, immuno and immunology that leads me to my greatest discovery. Everything in the body affects everything else. In order to properly treat and manage a chronically sick patient, you have to look at everything all at once. You have to look at everything all at once. So my approach is to ask the questions. What is the mechanism? What is the underlying cause? In our next section, we'll be talking about different patterns of thyroid. And for time, in order to save time, what I'll do is I'll draw out the pathways and we'll discuss them one by one. We'll see you in the next chapter. Previously in this lecture, I mentioned that there are over 30 different patterns for hypothyroidism. What I listed was the six most common, and then we'll also discuss Hashimoto's thyroiditis, which is the number one cause of hypothyroidism here in the United States. Number one, primary hypothyroid. This is when your thyroid stimulating hormone is elevated and you're, you take a medication and your thyroid returns to normal function. This is the only one where thyroid medication is actually very useful in terms of managing your case. Number two, hypothyroid secondary to an underfunctioning pituitary gland. Your pituitary gland is very sensitive to chronic stress. Chronic stress can be chronic inflammation, chronic uh, bacterial infection, chronic viruses, or even eating the improper foods, things that cause inflammation, GI upset, that can all impact the pituitary gland or your entire brain. So if your brain is impacted, your thyroid function can be affected because of the physiology. If you look at number three, thyroid underconversion. This is also due to chronic inflammation, stress, and an elevation in cortisol. When we have this chronic elevation in cortisol and stress, your thyroid hormone may not convert from its inactive form to its active form. Remember we said thyroid uh, hormones can be converted in your liver and your gut. So if you have poor liver function be due, due to inflammation and cortisol or uh, poor gut function because of that, then you will have an underconversion issue. Thyroid overconversion. That is when you have an elevation of testosterone. Hypothyroid is primarily found in women in a much larger ratio than men. So why would a woman have an elevated testosterone level? Two main causes. One, insulin resistance. Basically, they are pre-diabetic or diabetic, and they have this uh, elevation and spike of uh, insulin, and it can increase testosterone levels. Another way is they have something called polycystic ovarian syndrome. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is when your ovaries are producing testosterone. It's actually increasing testosterone levels and you might develop um, the excess of hair, uh, more acne, etc. 
and it creates a lot of problems, and it creates an over-conversion issue of your thyroid gland, uh, hormones. Number five, increase in thyroid binding globulin. Thyroid binding globulin is a marker that we can check in your blood. Thyroid binding globulin is like a taxi cab that takes your thyroid hormone and it takes it from your thyroid gland to all the receptors, like all your cells, your liver, etc. So this increased elevation of thyroid binding globulin or the number of taxis in your blood system, they take all the thyroid hormones in but they never let them out. So they're bound. These hormones are bound in this taxi cab and it's not being released. Therefore, you may have an underfunctioning thyroid. Number six, thyroid resistance. Thyroid resistance can occur due to chronic stress and cortisol also. Okay? Also, an elevation in homocysteine sometimes can create uh, thyroid resistance. Homocysteine is checked in your blood, and when we have a deficiency in certain B vitamins, you can have an elevation of homocysteine, and then it will create thyroid resistance. Now, when we look at this, has your doctor or your endocrinologist or primary care physician, did they check to see if you have chronic stress, bacteria, viruses, diabetes? Did they check to see if you have insulin resistance, polycystic ovarian syndrome? Did they check to see if you have elevated estrogens? Do they check for homocysteine? Probably not. In order to even figure out the first six patterns here, you need to check a lot of different things. You have to leave no stone unturned in order to figure out what the underlying causes are. So if, if you really want to get to the bottom of what's going on with your thyroid, a lot of different things need to be checked. My next session I will be talking about autoimmune disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Previously in this lecture, I mentioned that Hashimoto's thyroiditis is the number one cause for hypothyroid here in the United States. In order to affect, uh, really understand autoimmunity, we have to really uh, understand our immune system. What I drew behind me is a little teeter-totter explaining the fine balance of our immune system. So if we look over here, Th1, Th2, Th3. Th1 system is basically this. When you have an acute bacterial or a viral infection, you'll have a Th1 response. All your immune systems will get heightened. It'll send all these cells over to the foreign invader and kill it off. Once it's killed off, it needs to calm back down. So your T3, Th3 system is what does that. It's your regulatory T cells. It's basically like the referee in the middle saying, hey, you need to calm back down here. Your Th2 system is this. After your Th1 system has killed off the foreign invader, Th2 system will come in and tag everything. It says, hey, I got your, your virus. Next time you come back in, we're not going to get sick anymore. So it's basically your immunity. So your Th2, Th1 system will be in a fine balance. It may go up a little bit here, go down here, kind of teeter-totter back and forth. When we have the autoimmune process going on, what happens is it'll shift. It'll be a shift and it will not come back to its normal balance. Your T regulatory T cells here, the referee can't do its job. It can't balance these two systems. So if we have an over-firing of one, of one part of your immune system, it will not only kill off the invaders, it will start eating up your tissues. In your case, thyroid. It'll affect your thyroid gland. It'll attack your thyroid gland. Because of that, um, the autoimmune process can go on and on and on if you keep stimulating the wrong pathway. Did you know that Th1, Th2, and Th3 here can be affected by nutrition or nutraceuticals? You may be taking some supplements that may be of some benefit, but it can also do you harm because you're stimulating the wrong system, the wrong immune system. If you take a lot of herbs and you feel like, you know, you thought it was good for you, but it actually makes you feel worse, you may be stimulating the wrong system and causing more harm than good. In order to understand autoimmunity, 
you have to understand the fine balance and you also have to understand that the immune system actually the primary area it lies in is your gut your GI tract contains up to 80 percent of your immune system so if we have poor GI function you may also have poor immune function poor immune function you may develop autoimmunity you have to look at the underlying causes and the connections behind what is really going on with your thyroid. In our next section, we'll be talking about you, the patient, and what drives your symptoms. Now I like to talk about you, the patient. What I did was I drew out a web of physiological dysfunction behind me. We'll go ahead and discuss it in detail. If you, the patient, is suffering from a thyroid symptom, there can be a variety of different causes for that thyroid symptom. So, number one, parasites, bad bacteria in your gut lining can affect your thyroid gland. Number two, laundry list of medications that can affect your thyroid gland. Number three, hormone imbalances, testosterone, estrogen, cortisol, all can impact how your thyroid functions. Number four, blood sugar. Diabetes, insulin resistance, hypoglycemia, all can impact the thyroid. Autoimmunity, skewing of your immune system, overreaction of your immune system can affect your thyroid gland, especially Hashimoto's. Diet and lifestyle. If you come, in, come into our office, we'll take you by your hands and take you step by step by step in order to change how you eat what supplements to take, and how to change your lifestyle so you can get back to the ro uh, road for recovery. Gut function. Your gut function is crucial because your immune system lies there, and your immune system can have a huge impact on your thyroid. Brain function. Your brain is the control center. It controls all your physiological functions. If your brain is not working at its optimal, Neither is all your organs, your blood vessels, uh, your tissues in your body. Your brain needs to be working at its optimal. I would like for you to take advantage of our internet offer. I would like you to take advantage of our free DVD, free newsletters, and our free 15-minute phone consultation. In order to change your life, you need to take the first step. Please call us at 978 688-6999. We'll see you back on the healthy side. Thank you.